In this video, we're going to look into HDMI, SDI, and fiber optic cable. We'll even talk about ethernet and see how you can best utilize these in your live environment to transmit video. Hi everybody, my name is Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs, and here are some guidelines around this topic. My first guideline is HDMI should be used primarily to get from the device to a converter. Number two is SDI is very reliable when used to send and receive signals from a source to a destination. Number three, Ethernet is not designed to transmit video. So if you need to send video over Ethernet, use data, a data network such as NDI or Dante to basically send your content over the network. These are very reliable solutions to make this happen. Okay, so number four is fiber HDMI. It looks cool, but if you actually need to go over 300 feet, then traditional fiber optic cable is more reliable and it doesn't require changing out the cable to use it for other things in the future. Okay, and the last one is, if you're setting up a TV in your space and sending a signal to it, run an SDI cable and power the converter on the TV whenever possible. So every time I lead production for a concert or mobile event, I like to visit the space prior to the event to get a feel for the environment. That way we know where stuff is and we can see what the venue has to offer and what we need to bring in ourselves. For one particular event we recently did for the Way Dot Movement at a local college, at front of house we had a computer set up to run ProPresenter 7 with two screens connected. We used the venue's projector for a photo slideshow I had playing as people walked into the event. And then we moved the screen up and displayed lyrics during the music worship part of the gathering. We also set up a TV that we put in the back of the room as a stage display screen. I ran a 100 foot SDI cable to the front and connected it using an SDI to HDMI converter to the venue's projector HDMI input. Then I did the same thing to the TV we used as a stage display. Then at front of house, I plugged both SDI cables into a Decklink Duo 2 card connected through the ProPresenter 7 machine through a Sonnet Express PCIe enclosure. This is a very simple setup and basically what I do anytime I have a setup like this where I need multiple, multiple screens. Now let's look at HDMI, SDI, and fiber. HDMI is a very standard type of video connection that is used to input and output video and audio to and from devices. HDMI connection types are full-size HDMI, mini HDMI, and micro HDMI. Smaller devices typically use the micro and mini HDMI connections where larger devices have the full-size HDMI. My GoPro, for example, has the micro HDMI and my camera has a mini HDMI and my other camera has a full-size HDMI output. Video switchers either have full-size HDMI or SDI connections. HDMI to SDI converters use the full-size HDMI, just like TVs and game systems use the full-size HDMI. HDMI is so common that you would think, why don't we just run a 50, 100, or 200 foot HDMI cable? And this is not a good idea. The longer the HDMI cable, the more the signal weakens. This will lead to signal loss and you becoming very annoyed as you try to get it working. The quality of the cable partially determines how much distance you can get with, but generally HDMI over 50 foot is a bad idea. If it's for your house, then it might not be as big of a deal, but if this is a signal that someone is relying on, depending on in a production environment, then I suggest only using an HDMI cable to get to the converter. Fiber HDMI is another popular option. If you need to transmit video over 300 feet or between buildings, then fiber is the only way to go. Fiber, which is the transmission of data over light, basically means signal degradation is not so much an issue. The negatives are that these fiber HDMI cables are not bi-directional. Also, the longer the cable, the more likely you're gonna need to introduce a booster at the beginning of the run. Under 300 feet, SDI is definitely the best option. Over 300 feet, fiber is definitely the best option. I found these HDMI fiber cables on Amazon. It was 328 feet or 100 meters for $120, and 500 feet, 150 meters for $325. Again, if this is a signal that you're going to rely on and the run is under 300 feet, then save yourself the hassle and go with SDI. It's cheaper and guaranteed to be more reliable. So before we look at SDI, which is the most common and a very reliable solution for transmitting video, I'd like to compare the fiber HDMI with traditional fiber optic cable.
In the projects where I have used fiber cable to transmit video and networking signals over many hundreds of feet, I have used single mode fiber with LC connectors. Unlike the HDMI fiber cable, traditional fiber has several common connection types that get used in different applications. LC has become an increasingly popular uh, connector due to its small form factor, ease of use, and high performance. Fiber is great when signals need to transmit over 300 feet, which is the max safe distance for copper cable such as SDI for video or ethernet for networking. All copper cable is limited in distance due to its copper core causing the signals to eventually degrade. Ethernet cable is another option people turn to, but it's an even worse option for video. Yes, it has a lot more wires, but each wire is so much smaller. SDI has a thick copper core that gives it strength and reliability. Ethernet was really designed for networking, not video. So if you wanna transmit video over Ethernet, then transmit video over the network infrastructure. NDI and Dante are great and reliable solutions to do this. So traditional fiber is a lot different than HDMI fiber because with this cable, different converters can be used to transmit different types of signals. Video and networking are probably the main signal types that are transmitted over long and long distance with fiber optic cable. Signals can basically be sent for miles and miles over fiber cable. When using the internet, we often forget that massive fiber cables rest at the bottom of every ocean to connect continents together. Your church probably doesn't need a link like this to Africa, but you might need a connection to different buildings on your campus. Running fiber across buildings provides many options to change out connectors and continue to reuse the cable for years and years to come. Blackmagic Design's optical fiber 12G SDI converter is capable of transmitting or receiving 4K signals over single mode fiber. Purchasing this for $165 won't get you up and running though. You still need to purchase the SFP module, either the 3G SFP optical module for $139 or the 12G SFP optical module for $395. These devices are not included to make the device cheaper since some users will purchase the a module to do 3G or HD or 12G 4K with this device. Not everyone needs the same thing. Connect a single mode fiber cable and now you can transmit an SDI video signal from 15 to 28 miles to a second device where you convert it back to SDI. So check out the link in the description for those devices to check them out. Fiber can also be used to extend networking over a great distance. This StarTech Gigabit Ethernet Fiber Converter can be used to transmit Gigabit Ethernet up to 1800 feet or 550 meters with the included transceiver module. I've mentioned the transceiver module or SFP optical modules a couple of times now. Every device that sends and receives signals over a fiber connection will have one of these devices to interface the fiber cable with this device. These modules convert electrical signals into optical signals and then on the other end turns the signals back into electrical signals. These modules also come with different power options based on the transmission distance they're designed to support. Isn't that cool? The transceiver module or SFP modules convert the signal into lasers that are sent down the fiber line. So another reason these are often sold separately is because with higher end gear, you're gonna need to select the proper module to handle the distance of your fiber run. Shorter distance runs don't require as high strength of an SFP module, so it's safe to say if you keep your fiber run under a few miles, you won't need to worry about the laser strength. I've mentioned bits about SDI, it's a very reliable solution. Lots of video switchers have native SDI connections. You can purchase converters such as the bi-directional HDMI to SDI converter from Decimator to convert HDMI signals from computers or to TVs. Most users don't even need to go anywhere near 300 feet, so SDI is the perfect solution. When buying SDI cable, be sure to get flexible SDI cable. If you're wrapping it up frequently, you're gonna love yourself for this. The stiffer stuff is fine for a permanent installation, but I don't recommend it for day-to-day -day operations. Now that you have a better understanding of how to transmit video and network over SDI and fiber, let me know in the comments how you would like to implement this into your environment. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nathan and I will see you next time. Bye.